Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. Today I have a really fun antique dresser makeover for you. It was a lot of work so <laughs> buckle up but I tell you what I literally had no clue that when I started this project that how different and how gorgeous this dresser was going to turn out. It turned out absolutely beautiful and so let's just get straight into the process. I'm excited to share it with you. I was all set to start on this dresser and I was getting all prepared. I cleaned up the entire space and then I realized that I have like this much left of the citrus strip. <sighs> so I'm gonna make a quick trip into my local Home Depot and pick some up. So I'll be right back. Okay, that wasn't exactly right back, but I got me some citrus strip and the pants that I am planning on doing is called limousine leather. Straight up black. There's no if, ands, or buts with that color. That's what I've decided to go with for what parts I do paint is going to be actual black. And I'm going to show you the process of how I make my own super amazing, spectacular chalk paint. It's really easy and it is really awesome paint. So, okay. Let's get into this. I better take my husband's hoodie off because he will not be happy if I get citrus strip on it. Before we actually begin, I should probably start by taking all the things out <laughs> and taking the hardware off. So I keep my gloves, all the children's gloves. These are actually original to the dresser. Really pretty, simple brass knobs. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I might use some rub and buff on them just to make them a little bit, I don't know, prettier. Here's a cute tip, cute. Here's a short tip, small tip, a very, very valuable tip. If you get to where you have to replace the hardware for the back of your knobs. If you happen to get an older piece of furniture that has the hole in the back, like sometimes they get worn out over the years. If you use a washer, it can help it from like going in to the dresser drawer. So that's a small tip. And also if you happen to get screws that are too long, again, you can use a washer and it helps make it fit snugly. So I'm gonna put all of these into a sandwich bag and put them away so that they do not get lost. So it looks like I have a couple of drawer stops. This is what they look like typically. They will be at the very back on the side of the drawer to stop the drawer from going all the way in. So these apparently fell off. I have several of them, which is why the drawers were going in too far. So I'm gonna to have to glue these back. I hope I have some wood glue. I really don't want to have to make another trip to the hardware store. But until then, I'm going to take them out so that they don't get lost. So it looks like I am missing one. So I'm going to put these with my other pieces. This dresser is actually barely well made. It's not like some of the other cheaper pieces from this time period. I don't see a maker's mark, but it's definitely old. And you can tell that because of the back. Do you see how the back has a solid wood? It's got solid wood in the back here. Newer pieces would have had a single panel of like a thin hardboard or a thin panel of plywood. So because it is solid wood pieces like this, you know that it's an older piece. And um, if you are wanting to get into purchasing antiques or vintage furniture for your house. I actually did a video on all of the do's and the don'ts. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that up here for you if you would like that information.
it is already starting to work. You can kind of see the bubbling. So you can see the bubbling starting to happen. And that is a good sign that I'm just going to, I'm going to let it continue to work for probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 more minutes I'm going to put it on. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to start on my drawers so that they kind of work in a subsequent order. By the time this is ready for stripping, I can strip this and those will be sitting. And then when this is done stripped, I can go straight into the drawers and hopefully this will be a fairly quick, we'll see about that. I already have my trash can ready for stripping. All right, let us see how easy it comes off. gotten what I can off with just the initial stripping process. So now I'm gonna actually scrub it with soap and water and a scrubby and see how much more I can get off. That was a lot of hard work. <laughs> Probably like two hours worth at least. So I almost got it down to what exactly it was before I painted it. I think I'm paying penance for needing that quick win. Um, I bought this dresser probably three years ago and I'm pretty sure I was pregnant at the time and I needed a quick win, which is why I just ended up painting it instead of doing anything else because I just needed something done. <laughs> and something pretty. And so also, you know, I feel like certain seasons of our lives just require um, simpler solutions. And the simple solution was to just paint this dresser with some chalk paint. So I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I know that I'm cleaning up my own mess at this point, but that's all right. This was not Bondo. It was actually just some spackle, which is why it came off when I was cleaning. So I'm gonna actually have Bondo to fix that and a couple of spots on the drawers. But I did a lot of scraping and I'm gonna have to come back in with a detail scraper and get the rest of the paint out of the tiny little holes in the, like over here and have to, to fix that. <laughs> but other than that, it's looking pretty good. This dresser is very solid, so. This drawer is a solid piece of wood, so there's no veneer on this. This has, all three of those has have a veneer on the front that is not in the best condition. It's not terrible, but it's not in the best condition, so I will have to do a little bit of patchwork on that, but like I said, it's not awful condition. It's just going to require a little bit of touch up here and there. But anyway, this is all I'm going to do for the evening. And then I'm going to get started on it again tomorrow. And thankfully, I have kept my process fairly clean. I made a little bit of a mess that I'm going to vacuum up. But then most of it I wiped up with my rag. Now, me, on the other hand, that's a, an entirely different story. Got mess all over my clothes. But that's all right. That's the life of the DIY stuff. I'm really loving how it's looking though. I can't, I'm really excited to see it once I start sanding because this color right here excites me. Although I know that this color, since it's a different color, it's a different type of wood altogether, is gonna be completely different than this, these two. So it's always fun. That's why they stained these dark typically um, is because they used different types of wood. So they wouldn't stain the same. So the stain that they actually used is like 
a mixture of like stain and varnish and maybe even a little bit of paint too to make it all look uniform. All right, I will see you tomorrow. Now comes the super mundane part of sitting here and trying to scrape all the stuff out of the tiny little cracks. Uh, but I do realize I did this to myself, so. am I going to spend scraping paint out of tiny little itsy bitsy areas probably to get to the end of it and still have to paint it because I mean look at this uh, I have to clean it up because I can't paint it without cleaning it up first but there's probably no way I'm gonna be able to stain this just to sand it would be a pain in the absolute butt. As much as I love detailed pieces like this, they are a pain to refinish. If you're like trying to completely refinish it to get the, the dark stain off of it, which it was in really not great condition when it started. I mean, the original finish on it was pretty damaged. And the veneer is damaged in several places so you do have to ask yourself like as much as I would love to be able to refinish this piece is it worth the time and effort and expense that it's going to take to get it to that place and I mean if you've got the time and you've got the space to be able to take on a long project now here's the thing I don't I don't have a garage and I don't have a workshop. I am literally working in my living room right now and right next to my front door. And this is the place that I have to do it. So while I have visions of grandeur for refinishing the, some of these pieces of furniture, I don't have a professional workshop to do that kind of work in. So I have to do what I can where I'm at. How much mess do you think this will make? Um, there is snow on the ground outside and it's freezing so I'm gonna risk it and I'm gonna sand right here in my entry and hope that I don't make too large of a ginormous mess anywhere else so I'm sending this direction so hopefully this is where it stays I don't know about that though better take off my husband's hoodie before he throws a fit hard work or maybe my definition of hard is different than most people's but it's not hard work like it's not hard to do like super complex or anything like that it's just a lot sometimes but I think what I'm deciding is I'm going to paint what's a veneer and stain what's solid wood that's my plan for the moment we'll see how well that I don't even words I don't I don't know I'm so like tired already <laughs> and it's not even what like it's one o'clock in the afternoon what what time is it 12 it's not even one o'clock in the afternoon and i'm like can i go back to bed now oh my okay it's the old finish it's literally gumming up all of my sand sanding pads and so in the interest of saving myself time and money going through a lot of sanding pads because I've not even 
gotten half of that side done yet. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do another strip. I'm gonna put more stripping stuff on this and I'm gonna try to get rid of all of that old finish without having to destroy 15 sanding pads because those things are not cheap. So when in doubt, move a step back and try again. And I'm probably gonna do this to have to do this to the other side as well. So I'm gonna switch gears and I'll, while I wait for this and I'm gonna work on the drawers. But first I'm gonna put this in a baggie so it doesn't start drawing. I thought it was recording that whole time, apparently not. So <laughs> I switched gears and now I'm working on the drawers while this gets ready for me to strip that last little bit of the original finish that is being so stubborn to come off. how much lighter it is because that old finish is gone. So now it's just a matter of sanding it down. I hope, fingers crossed. So it is beautiful, but it cannot stay this way because of the sheer damage to the veneer. And here's the problem with that. Like I could glue it up, but then um, stain wouldn't stick on it. And then I could also um, paint that part if I wanted to. But here's the real issue. Leaving the veneer chipped like that is actually, it's actually asking for more damage down the road because when veneer, like when there's an in to get into the veneer like that, more and more of it is going to break off over time and use. So I wanna prevent it from that ha from happening. No additional damage happening to the piece. So I actually have decided to go and use what I had before, which is dried X spackle. And the reason why I'm choosing this over Bondo is um, number one, the ease, number two, the mess, number three, the tiny bits that I am needing. It's not worth my time to go through the mess of Bondo for these tiny little pieces of veneer that are missing. And honestly, this is what I used before and it worked really well as long as that part was painted. So I am going to be painting the parts that of the veneer that are broken. So I don't need to worry about that. So this is what I'm gonna use and it is color changing. So it indicates to you that it is dry. And then I'm just going to do a very light sanding on top of it before I coat it with bond on paint. So it is pink, pink to start. And I use spackle for all sorts of things like filling in holes and walls and stuff like that too. All right, and now we wait until it turns completely white and then I'll show you how am I gonna fix it from there. Okay, I'm formulating a plan here. The whole top, this whole top will have to be painted because um, there's a whole section here. I don't know if you can see it, probably not, but it has white paint stuck in the grain of the wood. So I can't get it out and I don't know if you can see it. Let me see, there it is. You can see it right there. All of that white paint stuck in the grain there, right there. and. There's no way for me to get it out. So I'm going to paint the top black. That's my plan for the moment. Now, when considering the drawers, however, I came up with a plan. I took a piece of 80 pound cardstock. I love making my own 
transfers and tracings. So I took a piece of 80 pound cardstock and I traced the back of this lovely design right here and this is what it came out with. And then I did again, I did that, but I, I folded it in half first to make this. So this is what's going to be on my drawer fronts, like this. This and that. And this is going to be painted in black right here. I'm thinking that this, they're going to be painted black in entirety except for this part. So this will be wood and then this will all be black. That's my plan. Unfortunately, this color wood does not match this color wood. And since this is solid wood, I want to keep this and I would rather paint the veneer, especially since it also has white paint stuck in the wood grain that there's nothing I can do about. So to make it have a cohesive look and I think carry the beautiful intricacies of the woodwork here and just this little design detail here, I just want to do a little bit to nod to it. So this completes that and then this does it again on the drawers and I'm excited about that plan. I really think that it will give it a little bit of an updated look, make it a little bit artsy for me because I love the artistic stuff, but not be like extra. And I'm just going to leave the side completely as is. So this dresser actually turned out to be a lot more natural, like original than I was actually planning. My inspiration photo was pretty much 100% black with like some heavy distressing so that you could see the beautiful grain underneath it. But so much of it was in such good condition and the solid parts on this dresser are oak. So I knew that I didn't want to paint it all. I wanted to keep as much of it as I could, the beautiful wood grain. And like I said, it just, it cleaned up really well. So I'm able to keep most of it natural wood, which really excites me. So I'm gonna go get my painter's tape and let's start taping out this dresser. I let it sit for a couple of days and dry. So now I'm hoping that the tape will stick. I'm gonna need a measuring tape so that I can get this center. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on it so that I can put it right in the center. But first, I suppose I need to find the center of this. All right. Oh, Lord. Okay. 23 and a half. 23 and a half, because you can't ever be some simple thing and I'm not gonna use my brains. So 11 and three quarters. You know, I am pretty close. 11 and three quarters, about right there. So I'm going to just fill this in with tape and then come back in with my knife and cut out the shape so that it's completely taped all the way around. This drawer is ready. And I'm gonna tape off everything before I get my paint ready because once my paint is ready, I'm gonna wanna just paint. So I'm gonna paint, tape all the drawers and then paint them all. I'm thinking these um these drawers are getting are all getting basically painted. I'm gonna leave this unpainted. So I'm not actually gonna tape this one. I'm just gonna be very careful when I get around here. I'm probably gonna take a detail brush and do that. Cause that would take me like 50 hours to taper out that tiny little stuff. But for these, I'm gonna do this in the center of just wood. So again, I need to find the center of my drawer. 
29 and a half, 14 and three quarters. Again, I need to know the center of this. So fold that in half and this is not symmetrical by any means. Like they, the two sides are not exactly the same, but I'm okay with that. I think it just kind of adds to the character of it. Hand painted items would definitely not have been perfectly symmetrical. I probably needed a pencil. Oh look, there's a knife in there. So I'm going to mark my 14 and three quarters for my center, but I also need to know the center of this. So the center of this is four inches. So I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna mark right here. And this is about five inches. So two and a half inches would be half of that. So that's the top and that's the bottom. So it needs to be about here. And again, I'm gonna fill it in with tape. ready for me to make my chalk paint. So I'm gonna go and get my base of the items and start making that paint because once I get that done, guys, this dresser is gonna come together super quick. Like, I'm gonna be done with it in a matter of an hour because chalk paint dries super quick. And I probably will do two coats on the top and um, as well as on the drawers simply because, um, well, probably, probably not on the drawers because of the taping that I have there. I'm gonna have to be very careful not to mess that up. <laughs> but once I get the chalk paint done, which is gonna be super quick, then I can top coat it and then that's pretty much it. And polycrylic dries just as quick as chalk paint does. So I'm gonna be done with this dresser within the next couple of hours and that's exciting. It has taken a lot of work up to this point, but it's been totally worth it to get the beautiful wood grain back and I'm excited to see it all finished. So let's get to that chalk paint. Okay, so I have chosen the color of limousine leather, which is a black color. And to make my chalk paint, I have mixed a half a cup of Plaster of Paris with probably an eighth to a quarter cup of water. And I want it to be smooth and rather thick, but you wanna mix it for sure to get all of the clumps out so that you get a really smooth paint. And then I'm just gonna pour my paint in and I'm pretty much gonna pour it all in. I will not use all of this, not even anywhere close, but I'm gonna mix it all into chalk paint. And then when I'm done with it, I'll just pour it back into this container for the next use. I have two cabinets here in the living room that are gonna be getting a makeover. And I'm thinking they're gonna turn into black. I used to paint everything white because I just love, I love white. I feel like it just, Especially when you have big pieces of furniture in a room, painting it the same color as the wall allows it to just kind of blend in and so it doesn't feel like you have giant pieces of furniture in your room. When you have dark pieces of furniture, you can definitely feel them in the room a lot more. But alas, white pieces of furniture with five children look disgusting. All right, I've got my homemade chalk paint, so let's get to it. Really, there are three main huge benefits of using homemade chalk paint. Number one, it dries extremely fast. Number two, it self evens, so it will not have brush strokes when you're done with it. And number three, it allows you to really get the most out of a tiny paint sample. Moment of truth. Let's see how well this peels off this. That's pretty dang good, if I do say so myself. Just a few touch ups. It's 
mostly dry already, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit a little bit longer. And while those are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do a second coat on the top. So while I have it wet from the second coat, I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off. is pretty clean. Wow, look at that line. It's a good line. So I had to take a small detour to my local Lowe's because I was out of polycrylic. I had used that whole bottle all last year and I finally got down to it being empty. So now what I'm doing is just slightly sanding down the top surface of the chalk paint because it will be a little bit gritty from having added in the powder. So I just did a light sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. You can even do 220, would be even better, but I don't have any of that, so. So I just did a very light scuff sand on the very top and then I wiped it down with a damp rag and that just smooths it down really well. Just makes it really smooth looking. So that's what I'm doing with the rest of them. So it has dried enough now that I can start the polycrylic process, which is exciting. there you have it guys the entire process from start to finish on how to properly refinish or cycle or do a makeover on an antique piece of furniture especially if it has some kind of veneer damage I feel like I gave you some really good options that you can try to fix and make it beautiful even with the obstacles that you face so it is absolutely beautiful I am very happy with how it turned out. I think that I did, I was able to modernize it just a tiny bit. So just adding in this detail right here just gave it a little bit more of a modern feel. I could have just left that drawer open and I could have left those completely black, but I feel like it would have been very plain. And I think this beautiful piece deserved a little bit more than that. So I'm really happy that my brain thought of that <laughs> just out of nowhere. I just have those like epiphany moments where I'm like, aha. <laughs> so thank you so much guys for watching all the way through. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know with a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not subscribed. Thanks again, guys. I can't wait to show you what's coming up next. What is coming up next? Well, the walls are coming up next and painting is coming up next. And then more fun things like painting my tile here in my entryway and redoing this beautiful wardrobe over here to the side of me. I'm excited to get started on that one, but I'm gonna need the use of my saws, so it's gonna have to warm up a little bit before I do that. <laughs> so. Come back for more great content and I'll see you soon. Bye.